I made a previous video covering potassium, the basic overview. It's uh, less than four minutes, and this video is going to be more in depth. For potassium, it's the intracellular as opposed to sodium, which is extracellular. Now, both sodium and potassium are necessary for nerve impulses in the smooth muscle, so they work together. Potassium is necessary to maintain cardiac rhythm, and potassium is pretty much balanced through the active transport system. And I'll make another video on that, a real brief video to cover how that works. So the potassium, it plays an important part in the cardiac rhythms, so maintaining skeletal and smooth muscle contractions. There are several different ways you can increase potassium in your body. One is taking supplements, you know, potassium supplements. You also have bananas, dark green, leafy vegetables, raisins, salt substitutes, that's a source of potassium. All brand cereals, potatoes, dry beef, uh, that's going to be like beef jerky, dried fruit. And the kidneys, they regulate the potassium. So if something's wrong with the kidneys, you will see a, a change in the potassium levels. Now, if you have too much potassium in the extracellular fluid, you know, because it's being lost on the intracellular, so it's going to the extracellular. Now, if there's too much potassium in the extracellular fluid, it increases the catecholamine levels. And because of that, the aldosterone levels will increase. And then when you have increased aldosterone levels, that causes the potassium to leave the extracellular fluid and travel into the kidneys, where it's then excreted through the urine. And this is because of the concentration gradient that it had occurred. So that's why you're having so much potassium on the extracellular fluid. Now, a way to reduce that is using insulin. Insulin can lower the concentration of potassium. And the way that works is it helps the potassium travel into the liver and muscle cells where it's used in the process of breaking down carbohydrates and proteins by moving glucose into the intracellular fluid. So if there's an excess amount of potassium, then you can just give them insulin and it'll force it and uh, it'll force it into the liver and the muscle cells. And of course, if, if they already take insulin and you're giving them more insulin, you always want to check their levels, whether it, for their insulin or for the potassium levels. Because again, by giving them insulin, it's going to force that uh, potassium to travel into the liver and muscle cells. So you just want to monitor that real close. Just as a recap, the functions of potassium, it maintains the fluid balance in the cells. It contracts the skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscles. It contracts them. Also, it helps break down the carbohydrates and fats, promotes cellular growth, and it maintains the acid-base balance. And if you have too much of the potassium, it's going to be hyperkalemia. The range is 3.5 to 5, and your textbook may have it, uh, the numbers slightly different, but most of the places that I've found it, it's 3.5 to 5. Now, if there's a lot of contraction in the muscles, skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, if there's a lot of contraction, they're going to be real weak. Some of the symptoms or signs, muscle weakness in the lower extremities. You're also going to have, and just think of the, the muscles always like contracting. Uh, you're going to have intestinal cramping and diarrhea. You're also going to have the dysrhythmias of the heart because, again, it's contracting. It's you got a, all that smooth muscle just, you know, pumping away. Dysrhythmias, ventricle fibrillation, or cardiac arrest. And since it's having to deal with the heart, if uh, you hook your, if they get hooked up to an ECG, you're going to see changes as well. It's going to be tall, peaked T waves, wide QRS, and then you're also going to have flat or absent P waves. So all those can change because, again, the muscle contraction. You're also going to have anxiety, irritability, and renal failure because, again, it has to do with the kidneys. That's the main area. Uh, if there's any renal failure, that could cause hyperkalemia. And if you have too much potassium, hyperkalemia, if the level gets up to 6.5, that is life-threatening. And then I found this acronym on the internet, MURDER, M-U-R-D-E-R. -E and these are signs and symptoms of increased potassium. You have M for muscle weakness, U for urine, oliuria or anuria, R for respiratory distress, D for decreased cardiac contractibility, E, ECG changes, R, reflexes, hyperreflexia, or areflexia, which is flaccid. And there's a whole bunch of different acronyms. You know, if you're interested, just search acronyms and 
nursing or acronyms, potassium, and you can find a whole bunch of stuff. One really good site is Medscape. That site is really good. They also have an app and that's real good. So if like you're in clinicals and you need to find a drug real quick, you can just do Medscape, search it. The Medscape app, it's got a lot of information on it. Definitely recommend it. There's another acronym for the uh, hyperkalemia, and this is what causes the potassium to increase. So this acronym I found, it's a machine, and again, this causes the potassium to increase. So M for medications, uh, those could be ACE inhibitors, NSAIDs, A, acidosis, that's for metabolic or respiratory acidosis, C is cellular destruction, and that could be burns, traumatic injury, H is for hypoaldosteronism or hemolysis. I is for intake, and that's excessive intake of potassium, you know, supplements like we talked about earlier. N for nephrons, which would be the uh, renal failure. So if your kidneys aren't working right, it's going to increase the potassium. E is for excretion impaired. So you have a whole bunch uh, in your system. So all those, they increase, That's they cause the increase for the potassium. Now, treatment for hyperkalemia, you want to try to fix the cause. Are they hyperkalemia because they took too much potassium? Are they eating too much food that contains potassium? So what you want to do is increase their fluid intake. That way they can kind of flush it out of their system. You also want to monitor their heart using the ECG. And you can also give them chiazilate. And what that is, it's a sodium, so it's salt. And sodium and potassium, they don't get along. So if one's in the cell, the other one's out of the cell and vice versa. This chiazilate, if you're administering this, it's going to make the potassium go out. So they're going to excrete it through the urine. Well, one of the side effects, of course, you have to monitor it. So if you give them too much, they can now be the opposite extreme and be hypokalemic. So now we're moving on to hypokalemia. Hypo is going to be less than 3.5 because the average is 3.5 to 5. It's going to be under 3.5. When it gets too low, it could be life-threatening as well. And that number is 2.5. 2.5 is life-threatening. And the main cause for hypokalemia, it occurs when there's an excessive loss in the body, such as a diuresis. So during diuresis, the potassium is excreted from the urine as a result of high aldosterone levels. And the main diuretics, there's thiazides and loop diuretics, and they're the main cause for hypokalemia. So anybody on diuretics, you have to check for their potassium as well. And there's a few things I strongly recommend. Uh, one, whenever you come up across a word that you're not familiar with, uh, look it up and mainly the, the mode of action. You know, why is it doing what it's doing? That way it'll help you better understand what's going on and the reason behind it. That potassium plays a role in is, and I'll explain it just a little later, but it's the RAS system, the renin-angiotensin system, and that's RAS, or it's also RAAS, which is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system just a few tips okay so now we're going to move on there is a direct relationship between low magnesium levels and low potassium levels low magnesium levels stimulate the release of renin which we just talked about the RAAS which causes an increase in aldosterone and the excretion of potassium so once you kind of know the RAS system this will make better sense and it all goes together so some of the signs and symptoms of hypokalemia, you have fatigue, weakness, leg cramps. Those are some of the early signs. You have weak, irregular pulse, hyperglycemia, and that's caused by the impaired release of insulin. So now you're having too much insulin in your system. Decreased GI motility, and because of that, now you're going to have nausea, vomiting, bradycardia so again the potassium it controls contraction of the smooth muscles if there's low potassium there's going to be low contractions of the muscle so it's going to be a slow heart rate bradycardia and because there's a slow heart rate it's going to affect the ecg changes which is flattened t wave so it all kind of goes to, flows together there's going to be a slightly peaked p wave and you can treat hypokalemia by of course administering potassium and when you're administering this potassium, if you're doing it through IV, it co could cause 
irritation and pain at the actual site and central lines are preferred for the site of IV admission. For the levels you want your potassium is of course 3.5 to 5 so you just have to be careful when you're administering this because you could again give them too much and then they'll become hyperkalemia. Now when you're doing the infusion you don't want the IV rate to exceed 10 to 20 milli equivalents over an hour because the infusion could cause hyperkalemia and cardiac arrest because it's too much potassium and of course you never want to do a potassium IV push because I mean that's going to be way too much and it could be fatal so you have to do it slow and of course monitor the levels that way you don't send them to the extreme and of course the life-threatening level is 6.5 and if the client is on digitalis you want to watch for signs for digitalis toxicity also called dig toxicity if the client has low potassium you want to encourage them to start eating foods higher in potassium I'm gonna do a series on fluids and electrolytes so this will hopefully help out anybody who's trying to learn fluids and electrolytes if this helped out comment let me know that it helped click on the like button please subscribe and that way when I make new videos you'll be aware of them like I said I'm gonna be trying to do more fluid and electrolytes I know this gave me a it was real difficult when I was doing this fluids and electrolytes so hopefully it'll help out and if it does help share this with your fellow classmates and thank you so much for watching